Oh, I think I've got an obsession. Now I'm splitting gnomes in half. What do you think I'm going to do with this guy? Good morning, everyone. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, January the 2nd, 2023. Vlog number 297 and Happy New Year. And hope you had a great Christmas. Hope you had a Happy New Year. And welcome to the start of a new year. Yes. And I'm sure we all have exciting plans for this coming year. And we're probably hoping this coming year is going to be a lot better than the past year. We shall see. Okay. Speaking of we shall see, let's see what I have been working on. So this is a class I am taking online through my local quilt store, Ultimate Sewing. And this is the Block of the Month project. You've seen it uh, at some of the earlier stages. It is not done yet. We're only up to the fourth month of the Block of the Month. Um, and you can see there is some new applique added to the top and the bottom and the sides. And it's coming along quite nicely. I think it's going to be a beautiful quilt when it's done. Um, it is in my color wheelhouse for sure, and I'm really enjoying doing the applique. Um, I've never done a lot of applique before, and that's one reason why I took this class. There is a lot of applique and more to come, but uh, so far so good. So um, on Idiot Quilter tomorrow, I'll talk about uh, this applique in a little bit more detail and how I'm doing it. So that's what i've been working on there is another little project i have been working on and if you were online with us for stephen and walter live yesterday or and with the zoom that we did yesterday um then you know what i'm talking about but if you weren't then you're not going to know for a while because i am doing something in collaboration with stephanie stitches which will be revealed which will be revealed rented lips this morning um in the upcoming weeks Okay, moving right along before I say too much about that is uh, this week's YouTube channel. And I'm sure many of you got tech toys uh, for Christmas. And I know that I am always into tech toys, as you as you well know. Um, love them. And there are tons of videos uh, on YouTube about all kinds of things. But this is one site I like to go to every now and then to see what what's out there in tech. I like to keep up to, to speed with the new things in technology. Um, nothing makes you feel older than looking at a new piece of technology and, you know, basically not knowing what it is <laughs> or what to do with it or what people do with it. So this YouTube channel helps you keep abreast of all that information. And it's called tech zone this week's youtube channel is for you techies out there and i consider myself one of those kind of people as well because anything about technology i am really interested in and this is called tech zone and you can see here that they have a wide variety of videos about all kinds of things in the technological world they have 13 cool tools that have reached a new level uh gadgets from amazon most comfortable trucks van self-defense um things about cars all that kind of thing there's something here for everyone who's into technology i love to see the ones about inventions as well because i love thinking about what things may come up in the future and how that will change our world so if you're interested in tech check out tech zone so you'll find the link for Tech Zone in the show notes below. You will also find a link for uh, Stephen and Walter Live. And this week we did something just a little different. Uh, we're not going to do this a lot. Um, but yesterday, Sunday, January the 1st, I had a New Year's Day Sew and Craft Day. Had about 40 people at that. That was really great. Um, and I decided two because it fell on a Sunday and so does Stephen and Walter Live, I decided to combine the two. Now this was taking a bit of a risk because I didn't know whether or not the technology was going to give me a, some trouble, but it didn't. Now I had set things up in advance, had practiced it, so I was pretty sure I could get away with this. So essentially if you haven't seen that yet, haven't seen Stephen and Walter Live or you weren't part of it yesterday, what I did was I had my 
live Zoom going all day. When it came to time for Stephen and Walter, um, I meshed uh, the live Zoom with the live YouTube. So, in a sense, I had two audiences happening at once. I called one audience my studio audience, which were the people on the Zoom, and I called the other one my at-home audience, which were the people on the chat, the YouTube live chat. And it worked. It worked brilliantly. So I was really happy about that. Now, there is a way for you to be in Zoom and to connect it to uh, YouTube Live. Um, and Stephanie Stitches and Sean, the guy who sews, both gave me a little hand with that because they use that all the time. But to be honest, I found it very cumbersome and a, a huge time delay between what I was seeing on my computer and what people out there in Cyberland were seeing on theirs. So I decided to do it through uh, the software that I usually use, OBS, and the time lag was what it usually is, which is about um, uh, about uh, five seconds or something like that. So it worked, and if you want to see how it worked, just uh, go to Stephen and Walter Live. Yeah, it was interesting, I think. Okay, so there is also a link for the Idiot Quilty episode, uh, last week's episode, and So Chatty as well. And in So Chatty this past week, we talked about what Santa brought us, i.e. Walter and myself, what we gave each other, and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in the different things we got, you may want to check out So Chatty. Uh, you will also find a link for an upcoming event coming up very quickly. This is a busy week for events. Um, Craft and Chat, first Wednesday of every month. Well, the first Wednesday of the month is January the 4th, so in two days' time at the time of recording this. And uh, all are welcome to work on whatever, okay? It's not just for quilters. It's not just for sewers. It's for any cre anybody who's looking to be creative with other individuals, so Bring your project starts at 1 p.m. Eastern time and uh, enjoy an afternoon of community, fellowship, support, chat, gossip, working. It's all that and more. Yeah, all that and a bag of chips. Okay. And of course, there's my permanent link for uh, So Craft With Me. Um, when I'm here working away and I want some company, I'll activate that. If you're in the same boat at the same time, then you can click on that link. And if I'm here, I'll let you in and away we go. Um, I haven't had it up in the last couple of weeks. Been busy with Christmas and everything. I'm hoping to put that up a little bit more often. So if you're interested in that, you can either go to the show notes for all of my YouTube productions. It'll always be there. It's sort of a permanent fixture. Um, and, you know, if you want, you can just copy the link because it never changes and uh, put it somewhere safe on your computer. So, you know, it's there. You know, put it on your desktop kind of a thing. So you're working away and you decide, hey, let's see if Steve's around. And just click on it. That's simple. Yeah. Okay, let's move on, shall we, to looking out my window today all right so um it's a bit dark out uh right now it's about 7 30 in the morning i took this picture around seven o'clock so of course hasn't gotten light out yet let me get that up here for you there you go so that's the view from my ring camera you can see even though it's dark um you can see that uh, we have lost a lot of our snow we had rain last week a uh, couple of days and the temperatures have been pretty mild for this time of the year like we are in around you know above zero uh, and this is celsius so yeah things are disappearing uh, out here but i think later this week and if i look okay so according to the weather um forecast today well right now it's currently one degree celsius we're going to have a high five degrees celsius which that's warm so that little bit of snow we have left will probably most of it will probably disappear but later in the week well tuesday wednesday and thursday there are chances of rain and still mild temperatures 
Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are going to be much colder. Well, not really. Only at night during the day, they're going to be relatively mild too. So by the end of this week, we probably won't have any traces of snow whatsoever. Grass will probably start to grow. Who knows? And there isn't any snow in the forecast for the next week, week and a half, according to this. But it's Canada. Things can change. I mean, I'm not really complaining about that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't care about the snow anymore. However, I don't like rain in the wintertime either. So, you know, what can I say about that? Okay, so that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Well, nothing is pissing me off this week. Uh, I'm really starting to think that I've been doing what's pissing me off for quite a long time. And I don't know if this is a segment people really care about or not with me ranting away. Um, I also have been getting to think, you know, maybe this is a little depressing. Sounds like I'm always complaining. Maybe I should be looking at what's making me happy. But let's be real. <laughs> Crap happens, right, um, to everybody. So it's, it's kind of therapy, I think, when I do these rants. But this week is not a rant. This week is what I'm hoping... It, my hopes for this year. Okay, the big one, the elephant in the room, of course, is disease. And I'm not talking just about COVID. We've been through that. I think we have adapted. I hate to say it, but I think we have gotten used to COVID. I think we're just doing what we need to do on a personal level to keep ourselves safe. I know that if I'm someplace and there's a lot of people, I'm wearing a mask. Um, I'm not getting near anybody who has a sniffle or a cough. If I have a sniffle or a cough, I'm staying away from people too. So I guess the one thing that COVID has done is made us much more conscious about our health and how this can affect other people around us. And I think that's a positive thing. Um, you know, we should be concerned about, you know, spreading any kind of disease. Of course, we've had the problem with the seasonal flu and this RSV that kids seem to be most susceptible to, the respiratory disease, uh, all that kind of thing. However, according to our news, and you know, you take that with a grain of salt, what the news tells you these days, um, supposedly we just before Christmas, we peaked, whatever that means, in terms of those two diseases. So we're on the downhill slide from that. Is that a good thing? I guess it might be. I don't know. Who knows? But anyways, I hope that at least for Walter and I, we're hoping we can get back to something that's a little bit normal. And we're talking about travel this year. Um, I don't know how far we're going to get with that, but we are talking about travel. Actually, the biggest problem right now with travel here in our country is the airlines. And, you know, yes, we had big snowstorms that caused all kinds of chaos at Christmas time uh, for people who were flying to wherever. But I mean, it's also the luggage business. And uh, here in Canada, Toronto Pearson, the one that I would fly out of, has always been a shit show. Always. They never get their acts together. You know, in this day and age, you have to fly if you want to go someplace in the world. I mean, it's just the way of life. And you would think that they would have this down pat. They would know what they're doing. But it doesn't seem like they do. And they don't seem to care. They definitely don't seem to care about their customer base. I mean, Sunwing, crappy airline here in Canada, but it's cheap, supposedly. And Walter just told me yesterday that one of the reasons people take Sunline is if they want to go someplace warm and sunny like Mexico, that's the only airline here in Canada pretty much that has regular flights there so that's nice isn't it to know um so uh not that I have any desire to go to Mexico I never have I've been once I went to Tijuana on a day trip when we were in San Diego many years ago it was a bus trip yeah <laughs> so I had my foot in Mexico um but uh you know it's not not a destination for me I'm not a sun worshiper or that kind of thing but many people are. So this affects them. And so Sunwing took a bunch of people to Mexico for the holidays and left them there. Yeah, just left them, stranded them. And they didn't know how they were going to get home. 
that situation, I think, has now been resolved because Sun Wing came under a lot of pressure from a lot of people and a lot of agencies and things like that. And I guess they sent down a bunch of uh, planes to pick these people up and bring them home. Yeah. You pay for a service, you don't get it. So, yeah, you could go on for days about that. But let's move on because this isn't a rant. Okay. So, as I said, we have travel well we have sort of travel ideas i guess we're thinking of three potential trips in the next year um we're thinking about flying out to bc um in maybe april uh to vancouver we haven't been out there in many 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 years um so you know we'd probably get a rented car drive around go visit my brother in abbotsford which is south of vancouver haven't seen my brother in a long time so maybe that so that may be in April. I know for sure we're going to the East Coast in June because we've already booked our hotel in Halifax because it's the Canadian National Cult Show. And we want to see that. And we're going to drive there. Um, and so we'll make some trips to like Quebec City on the way and go to Fredericton probably in Halifax and probably PEI as well. Do the whole East Coast thing. Uh, so that'll be nice. And hopefully the weather in the first part of June will be very nice as well. Then we are toying with the idea, depending on how this next year goes, that in the fall, making another trip to Australia. We'll see. There are a lot of factors when you're planning a trip that far away. I mean, cost is one of them. Uh, because, I mean, the flight's expensive. Then you have hotel accommodation and everything like that. But I really love to go to Australia again. That would make it our fourth trip to Australia. But we'll see. Those are the ideas. But you know, I'm feeling a little more confident about making travel plans right now. The airlines are just one that's really, you know, getting my goat, but maybe it'll be better. Um, and we're not going at a time of the year when everybody is going everywhere. So that should make things a little better. So we'll see. And then, of course, um, I'm hoping the economy is going to be better. You know, food prices, for example. I mean, when you have to take out a small mortgage to make a salad. And that's why we're growing things. And uh, we're, we have more plants. We're having good luck with the grow lights. Going to talk about that a little later on. And we're thinking of investing in another grow light system as well. Double the pleasure, double the fun, all that kind of stuff. So that's something. And we've had our first harvest of lettuce, and it's great. So, yeah. And, of course, you know, prices on everything else as well. Will they go down? Well, let's be real. They might not go up as much, but, you know, once the grocery stores have us used to what we're paying for stuff, they're not going to cut into their bottom line and give us give us pass on to us the savings they may make when things are getting better in the way they get food and things like that They're, they aren't they're not going to do that and if anybody thinks that you know the new norm for lettuce is going to be 4.99 for a bloody head of iceberg and that affects everybody and it especially affects people who are on a limited budget or low budget and our government needs to step in and do something for those people. So I'm hoping this year that our government will do that and that the grocery stores, and this is this one I know is not going to happen, but, you know, in a perfect world, grocery stores would look at it and go, well, we're making enough money. We can put, save, drop our prices because, yeah, we're not going to make the projected profit, but do we need more money? They don't. It's just greed. But anyways. And, of course, what would be really nice, and, you know, when you say this, you sound like you're a contestant in a beauty contest. I'm hoping for world peace. Well, we always hope for world peace. Hope for an end to Russia's attack on the Ukraine. We hope that cooler heads in North and South Korea, um, you know, work things out there. Um, the Middle East. The Middle East. You know, if an alien came down to this planet, well, this is why we don't get visited by aliens, or they don't let themselves be known that they're here, because they take one look at this blue marble 
and go, hell no, keep on going. Keep on going, turn right, go to Alpha Centauri, because there is n nothing here to see. These people are primitive. So I'm hoping that 2023 is going to be much better than 2022, a lot better than 2021, and extremely better than 2020. And I hope you have a good year as well. Okay, so let's talk about our grow lights. Now, you know, every week I've been giving you update reports on how things are doing in, under the grow lights. And this is a new hobby. Now, I gave Walter a book about growing stuff because this is kind of his thing. He's he's looking after them, uh, the, the stuff, the watering and everything that you have to do. And actually, you don't have to do that much. You really don't. You just, you know, there's a mat underneath these these special boxes and the water goes up by osmosis. And you just keep that thing wet. And that's not a big chore to do. And so far, the herbs and the lettuce, as I've said, have been growing well. Um, so we're going to carry on with our experiment with this. Um, but in the meantime, we did our first harvest. Uh, for I made a salad using some of our lettuce and some of our herbs. So I have a little video to show you what that was like. I'm about to harvest our lettuce, first cutting from our lettuce that we grew under the grow lights, along with some oregano and some basil as well. And uh, there's about four different kinds of lettuce in this grouping here. So I'm just gonna trim it back and put it in, make a salad for tonight. And the extra I'll put in a bag in the fridge. And uh, yeah, and it should come back up again. We're hoping that's how it will work. So fresh salad in December, from under the grow lights. So that takes me to what am, I, what am I doing with my 3D printers? Well, I'm making gnome bookends. And let me see if I give you a little picture here of what I'm talking about. Here they are, gnome bookends. This is my latest project. Um, now these two guys are sort of the prototype. I have to glue the gnomes onto those bases, um, but they're kind of fun. But here's the ironic part. So I'm making bookends. Anybody have any books? <laughs> I don't. Well, that's not true. I do have a few books, but I don't have the books I used to have because when on one of my major purges after I retired, I got rid of all kinds of books. They were books that I either they were books for school. I donated those books back to the school kind of a thing. Um, or they were just novels and things like that. And, you know, I don't read books anymore. I read using my e-reader, my Kobo, which for Americans, a Kobo is a Kindle. Okay, same thing. And uh, that's how I do it. And I, at one point in time, I didn't think I would like to uh, go to electronic reading, but I love it. I absolutely love it because I can adjust the size of the font. Important when you get to my age uh, with your eyes. And um, I never have to use a paper bookmark because when I'm finished reading I close the book and when I want to read it again, I open it up and it goes right to the page I left off from. And it's so easy to buy a book. Um, you know, I finish a book, I'm in bed, I'm finished a book. I uh, go immediately to the Kobo store, find something else I want, download it, bang. Um, I love it. I love that way. So what am I going to do with the bookends? <laughs> I don't know, but I made some. Now I'm working on... Uh, some really sharp looking ones. I'm using a very shiny purpley uh, color for the gnomes and a black for the stands themselves. And I have one of those done. But yesterday when it was printing the second one, they take about 20 hours to print. And I have two printers going at a time to one that makes the base, one that makes the gnome. Um, my one printer was making a really bad noise. So I went over and investigated, saw that I was not getting any filament coming out and stopped the machine. And I think I have a seized wheel on one of the components. So at some point this today, I have to take a closer look at that. And I think it's a minor problem. I'm pretty much sure I know how to fix it. I actually have spare parts if I need a spare wheel. So get that back in operation. But anyways, that's what I've been doing. And I'm sure some of you got 3d printers for christmas and i'm sure you're pulling your hair out <laughs> i talked about that last week okay so that takes me to um blasts from the past trips 
and this is Sydney now. Uh, this is still this is back to 2018. Last week I did the little 2016 New Year's Eve at the Sydney Opera House for you. Um, now we're back to 2018, and this is Sydney. It's our fourth day in Sydney. It's March the fourth, 2018, and here we go. Okay, so we're at Bondi Junction. We took the train out here because Walter wants to go to the Bondi Beach. And we're in, we end up in a big shopping mall and we're trying to orient ourselves to get out onto a street because there's supposed to be a spotlight not too far from here. So we will see. This is a huge shopping mall on many levels. As you can see. So this is Bondi Junction, which is a suburb, I guess, of Sydney. Then we're in the streets. We just came into the mall. I'll be trying to figure out where we are. So we're at the spotlight in Bondi Junction, which I already mentioned is a suburb of Sydney. We took the train to get out here and ooh, look, fabric. Let's look at fabric. I doubt they'll buy anything here, but it's probably very much like the last one we were in, but you never know. Okay, we're someplace called Bondi Beach, which apparently is a must see we took the bus ride from hell because everybody else and their dog was on the damn bus. I'm not a bus person. Never was, never will be. Brings up bad memories from childhood when they used to bus me to school. So here we are. Seems very touristy, very sporty, whatever. So it's windy out here on the beach today, as you can see, but does not seem to be deterring the guys. Here, this is now the beginning. For some reason, they start fall on March 1st, whereas we start spring on March the 21st. So, not really sure if this is true or not. This is all Bondi Beach here. Shops, cafes, beach, that kind of thing. So we just finished off $32 worth of tacos, which consisted of one, two each, very small, like the small taco shell tacos. They were okay, they were tasty enough, what was fried green tomatoes, yeah, it was served with chicken thing. However, they were $32 for tacos, but it wasn't pizza. I swear in this country, they only know three foods, burgers, pizza, or oh, pasta. Everywhere you go, that's what you can get. And it's mostly pizza really question the whole show of my kitchen rules over here. Trying to show them. Well, Melbourne had more selection, but it was, uh, we didn't choose them. 
they, remember they had like uh, skewers with meat on it and they had uh, lots of fish. Yeah, well, that's one thing. They do have lots of fish. But I don't know. I've never seen a country for pizza like this one. It's like every place has pizza. pizza. Now, the pizzas, except for one I had yesterday, and it wasn't terrible. Actually, the pizza I have had over here has been very good. I've mentioned it before. But if you're coming for the food, it's okay. Just be prepared that you're going to eat a lot of pizza. Okay. Here's your proof that we had $32 quesadillas. Actually, they were more than that because the chicken ones were 16 for two and 14. So yeah, $30, $30 tacos. Of course, then the beer comes up on top of it. Now that's only four pints. So that's $40 in beer. So the beer costs us more than food. And there you go, $70. So if you come here, don't expect to eat cheap. So, we're on our way from Bondi Beach to Bondi Ju Ju Junction. We decided to walk at this time. It's only about a 38-minute walk. No one said it was all uphill, however. But we've come onto a flat area. And, uh, I thought I'd show you where the real people live in this area. Aren't you thrilled? In gas, Walter wants you to know, is $1.33 a liter. Which, hmm. I looked up Oshawa the other day, it was $1.13. Oh, well, for 20 cents less at home. So, whatever. We're at uh, the market now. It's called Patty's Market. We've been in here before. It's a lot of junk. We have to make junk, that kind of thing. You know, the junk market. So just row after row after row, and mostly junk. It's a flea market. Can you sit on me? So you want to have to Now we're in China too. So that takes me to events in the past week. Um, well, before I start talking about that, I forgot to tell you about something else interesting that happened. And I just got done telling you that um, I, I wasn't going to rant. Well, I'm going to rant a little bit. Actually, it's not so much of a rant, but it's just something that a lot of us don't do and we should do more because I think it's beneficial not only to ourselves, but to companies that produce certain products that we may use on a regular basis. And this is one, I'll show you a picture here. This is a bag of crackers. It looks like the bag of crackers have been crushed. And they have been, but not by me. That's the way they came in the box. I bought a box of townhouse flip side, flip side crackers, I think they call it, or flips, something like that. Anyways, um, I like the townhouse crackers. They're made by Kellogg's. So, you know, we're talking here name brand company. And uh, when I opened up this box, this is what I found. Now, I had, I had to go through it and find whole crackers. And that wasn't easy to do. I dumped the whole bag out on my counter, sifted through, found the whole crackers. About I got about a third of the bag were whole crackers. The rest were in these bits and pieces that you see here. 
and I was very ticked off. Now, this was a product I had not bought uh, in, in the townhouse line before, uh, but I always usually buy their townhouse, the regular ones, and those ones are packed very nicely. They're in tubes in the box. They come in plastic wax paper bag tubes all stacked up, which gives them added protection when they're shipping them because you know you're going to expect some crackers to be broken uh, in all of these but not the number that was in this so I thought you know I'm going to write to Kellogg's about it so this is what I wrote hello I want to say that I've always found your products to be of high quality so I was very surprised when I bought and opened the, this, this box of townhouse flip side crackers they were in pieces I was using these for an appetizer tray and had to dump the whole box out to find enough whole crackers to use on my tray. The majority of the crackers were badly broken and I have included a picture of these. Now I understand there is some set settling in shipping and that you're going to get a few broken crackers, but I did not expect almost the whole bag. I have bought your regular townhouse crackers when uh, you packaged them which you package in individual tubes. I have found this method of packing has much uh, much, much less breakage. I wish you would do the same with this product. I thought you should know because you may not be aware of this problem. As for me, well, I love townhouse crackers, but I will not be purchasing, purchasing flip sides again. It's just a waste of money. Thank you for, for considering what I have written. So that's what I sent off to them. Um, now, a lot of times on the packages, on the box somewhere, there is a website that you can go to. This one did not have any, so I had to do a search on Google for them, and actually it came up pretty quick, um, and I found an email address to uh, send to uh, my complaint to, Kellogg's Consumer Report. It's called consumersupport at kellogg.com, and this is what I got back. I sent my email, and this is the answer I got back. Stephen, thank you for letting us know that your crackers were crushed and broken. <laughs> this strikes me as funny. We are sorry about this and appreciate the opportunity to make it right. We want every package of crackers that makes its way onto the store shelf to be in great condition. We are really sorry to learn that wasn't the case for you. Sometimes when a package is handled roughly after it leaves our facilities, the crackers can get broken along the way. Product quality is extremely important to us. Your comments about Keebler Townhouse Pretzel Flip Sides Original will be shared with our quality team for continuous improvement. Hoping to restore your faith in us, I'm sending you a free product coupon that should arrive within the next 5 to 10 business days. You can replace the Keebler Townhouse Pretzel Flip Sides original or try one of our other tasty foods. Thank you again, Stephen, for reaching out to us. We truly appreciate the time you've taken to share your experience. All the, bless, all the best, Claude, Claude Z, Kellogg Consumer Affairs. And there's a phone number. Okay, that's fine. That's great. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they change their packaging of these because that's all they really need to do. Why not package these the same way they package the original crackers because they're the same size. Uh, I don't get it. Um, maybe they are doing that, although they didn't say that in the letter. They said, you know, they put it on for continuous, you know, reevaluation or whatever. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. So apparently I'm getting a coupon. For a free product so i can go out and buy another box and i will i'll buy another box with that coupon i'll get another box of these same crackers and i'll compare it i'll see how those come if they come in the same uh way i'll send them another email yeah um what more can i say maybe you think i'm just being a bastard i don't know um but you know we put up with this kind of crap and we never say anything and i think if you don't tell a company you're not happy with something then they don't know and they just assume that their methodology that whatever they're doing is okay so you know we need to to reach out to them i know it takes time but i'm retired i have time so i'm doing it you're welcome <laughs> for you so I'll let you know what happens in the future with my cracker gate thing. So that takes me to what's what happened last week. Well, I've already talked about most of this stuff. Of course, New Year's Eve occurred. Uh, what did we do? We stayed home. Uh, we always do. Uh, we don't bother anymore with, you know, going out 
and partying with a lot of people we don't know and drinking and then having to take an Uber home or something like that. Uh, we just stay at home, had hors d'oeuvres, had some champagne, watched the fireworks across the world uh, on YouTube, which is really kind of cool when you think about it, that you can do that. And, you know, the capitals of the world all seem to put out a spectacular display of fireworks. And here in Canada, no, we have two firecrackers, one didn't go off. Yeah, it's kind of sad really. But anyways, that's what we did. We kind of joined up with uh, Stephanie Stitches. Her, um, uh, she had a, a retreat uh, in Georgia and uh, she put up a Zoom link at about 1030 and we joined the ladies for that for a little while. Um, they were having a really great time. I kind of felt like an intruder though, because we weren't really part of the retreat kind of a thing. So um um, I didn't really get into it. Um, nothing against what Stephanie was doing. It was just me kind of a thing. So we only stayed for a little while. And then, uh, you know, midnight came, I went to bed. <laughs> Walter stayed up as he usually does until about three in the morning. But I went to bed and that was New Year's. And of course, the next day was a great day. We had the uh, all day sewing event, Zoom event. Uh, which you can see pieces of what that was like. If you have not yet seen Stephen and Walter live, check that out. You'll get a feel for it. Had 40 people at the height of it. That was wonderful. And it was a great day. Got lots of things done. Learned a lot of things as I usually do. Um, and was just great uh, being with everybody. We had a really good time. Um, so when I have one of those events, if you've never been to one, don't be shy. Join up with us because we do have a good time. And speaking of that, um, what's coming up? craft and chat of course on uh, this wednesday a uh, mini version of one of these kind of days we don't usually have 40 people although it's growing all the time and that starts at 1 p.m eastern time link is in the show notes for it all are welcome whether you're a sower or not a sower it doesn't matter uh, a creator of some sort and on saturday we are off to uh the club <laughs> we call it the club uh for a sew day and that is usually put that's put on not usually is put on by the person who teaches the zoom sewing class that walter takes and i went to it last month um and i've gone the last couple of months and it's been great because it's nice to get out and sew with other people they're all making garments i'm the only quilter in the group and that's fine too and it, yeah it's a good time usually there's only maybe four of us i don't know uh but that's okay too. So I'm looking forward to that. That's coming up. Uh, in fact, there's another event coming up later in the month, which is a three-day event. It is a type of retreat, but it's a day retreat put on by Ultimate Sewing. Now, you know, I said I wouldn't go to one of those retreats again, but this is a different one. I'm not having to stay overnight in a place that I do not like. Uh, this is at a local hall. It's conveniently located very close to ultimate sewing so if you need something you can pop over easy enough and uh, it sounds like it'll be a great event and uh, you go home at night and you leave your stuff there it's all very secure and so I'm looking forward to that that's not until about the 21st of January it's a Saturday Sunday and a Monday Ooh, I just thought of something well I'll work that out later it means that I usually do my vlog on Mondays and I'll be at, I wonder if I could do the vlog at the retreat. Hmm. That would be interesting. Oh, well, gears are going. Okay. So now I'm starting to ramble. So I'm going to stop. I got decorations to take down. I've got printers to fix, quilts to make. Busy, busy, busy all the time. And I'd have it no other way. So I hope you have a great day week. I hope you have a great year. Happy New Year to you again. And I hope it's a great year for not just us, but the world in general as well. We need it. We need something positive, don't we? Okay. Have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.